Hi, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Diane. And I want to say hello to all of my new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining our family. We're so blessed to have you with us. I want to say welcome to all of our subscribers that have been here with us for a while. Today we're making Ina Gardens meatloaf. That's right, Ina Gardens meatloaf. Now, I have been watching Ina Garden for years. In fact, probably for almost a good 20 years. Um, I remember when my children were smaller, we would watch her. And uh, my baby boy is 35 now, so it's been, it's been a minute. And we're gonna get right into this. So this is a very different meatloaf than what I'm used to making. Um, normally I'll put um, green or red peppers in it. Uh, but today it's three cups of onions. So I've started chopping my onions and I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure them out because this is what I'm gonna say to do and she's a, a great cook. So I've just started chopping onions. I actually chopped up three large onions and I'm just measuring them right over here in my bowl. Alright, that is three cups of onion. So next we're going to heat our skillet and we're going to use, she says, one tablespoon of good olive oil. So I'm going to be using my tablespoon of olive oil and we're going to go ahead and get our onions in here and we need to have clean hands to do this because we're making meatloaf. Then she says to add two teaspoons of kosher salt and then we need one teaspoon of fresh thyme leaves. I'm not really that tickled with um, these leaves. This is what, uh, I'm sorry, it's my neighbor shooting. So if you hear the guns going off. We live out here in the country. And so we sometimes just get our gun and we start shooting just randomly any time of the day. Anyway, that's going to be okay. All right. We all have our firearms, so. It's a good thing we need to protect ourselves. Time, fresh time anyway, has a very pungent taste to it. And that's our, I'm going to sprinkle that in there. And then we're going to go in with one teaspoon of black pepper. And then we're going to cook these eight to 10 minutes until they're translucent. I'll come back after these get nice and translucent for about eight to ten minutes we'll come back and we'll continue with the recipe that looks good they look nice and translucent and the next thing we're going to do we're going to add three tablespoons of worcestershire sauce however you say it worcestershire sauce worcestershire sauce so three tablespoons and we're actually supposed to pull it off the heat let me do that. One, two, and three. Mmm, that smells good. And we're going to give it a good stir. Then we're going to add a third of a cup of chicken broth or stock. So I'm going to add some chicken broth. So here's my third of a cup. Chicken broth. Then we're going to add a tablespoon of tomato paste. I'm going to level this off. Clean fingers, y'all. Clean fingers. Clean fingers. 
All right, we're going to set this to the side after we stir it up. And we're going to let it cool a little bit. And then we're going to start working on the ground beef part. Mixing this all together. All right, that's how it's looking. I'm going to let it cool for a little bit and I'll be back. So our onion mixture has cooled slightly. It doesn't have to be cold. It just says slightly. Remember, we're putting this in the oven. So. All right, and we have two and a half pounds of ground chuck here. So it's two and a half pounds of ground chuck. We're going to add our onion, sauteed onion mixture to the ground chuck. Get all that goodness in there, y'all. Mm. I tell you, this smells really good. And then we have a half a cup of plain breadcrumbs. Get that in there. And then a half a cup of ketchup. This ketchup is going to go on top. I just want to get it measured out so that we'll be ready for it. Here's my eggs. The cost for two eggs, two extra large eggs. I only had large eggs. So I'm using what I got. I plenty in three eggs. Because they looked very small when I cracked them. So... We're supposed to beat the eggs, which is what I always do. We probably got it from Anna. Okay. So we're going to get our eggs beat really good. And we're going to just pull that right over in there. Let's get all the egg in there. Remember the egg helps to bind, come back to, for it to combine. Okay, very good. Now with our hands, which are so clean because we've washed them, we're going to just get in here and we're going to combine this. Get all the way down to the bottom and combine this really, really well. Okay, we want it to be really combined. So normally with my meatloaf, I would put in ketchup in it if I'm making a ketchup-based meatloaf from, from making just a uh, gravy meatloaf. I do just put the onions in it and sometimes maybe green pepper or just a tiny bit but if I'm making a gravy, a meatloaf that has gravy to it, uh, I must have leave the um, green pepper out. But y'all, this smells good. Mm-hmm. I'm not mad at it. Not. So I'm just trying to incorporate this into here. It really goes together really nice. And I can see why you would use ground chuck. It's a better whole together meat. It's coming together really, really well. Just going down to the bottom to make sure. I got everything on there the way it should be. Alright. Y'all, that looks good to me. I'm going to wash these hands. Come back. And we got a twist. Okay, guys. So, here's the twist. Sheet pan. We're going to cook it on the sheet pan. We're going to just dump the whole thing over onto the pan. Get some onions. We got some onions still hanging out in the bowl, but that's okay. We're going to shape this into a loaf. Okay. Maneuver this around. Okay. <clears throat> it's kind of taking the shape of the bowl, but that's okay. We're just going to pack this into a loaf. Yeah, this smells so good. Mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Just gonna tuck that meat. Put it nice and pretty. 
That looks good. I'm going to square it up a little bit. So when I cut it, we'll have a nice, hopefully a nice square edge and not a dull edge. It's just my thinking. Alrighty. Take time and shape it as as am I. Okay? Remember your oven is preheated at 325 and then we're going to take our ketchup and we're going to just slather that right on top using your fingers. We're just going to put that ketchup on top just like that. Oh, it's nice and thick. All right. Who knew? So the next thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to get a pan and I'm going to fill it full of warm of hot water just out of my tap. You don't have to heat the water up. And we're going to put that hot pan of water on the bottom rack and we're going to set the meatloaf on your next rack. Okay. So the meatloaf is not sitting on the water. Okay. Sitting on the bottom rack and you have your other rack in the middle. Set your meatloaf on top of that. I'm going to do that. And we'll be back when it's all done. It's going to cook for about an hour and 15 minutes. Get your meat thermometer out. You want the center of this to reach 160 degrees. Anywhere between 160 and 165. I'm to show you my pan. It's just a 9 by 13. It's an older pan that I got. And um, I got it filled not quite halfway. Um, the water should last. It shouldn't be a problem. But into the oven it goes. Alrighty, so our meatloaf is done. Um, I think I ended up cooking it for a complete 75 minutes. Put my uh, meat thermometer in there, and it, I, I was reading at 75 minutes. I was reading it right at 168. So I'm, I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to let this cool because we're going to have this for Sunday dinner. And I'm going to transfer it into um, my dish that I can just stick into the refrigerator. Thank you so much for watching. Be blessed. And I'll see you real soon. Mwah.